welcome. We're so glad you decided to uh, join us for this video presented by the Mount Air Christian Church. We want to make sure that you understand that in no way do these videos overtake the, the need to be in a local church. And so while we hope that these teachings will uh, help you grow and, and give you a better understanding and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His Word, uh, we want to make sure that everybody is plugged into a local church. If you do live in Mount Airy, uh, then we, we, we are welcoming and accepting of all people. And, and so uh, please come join us uh, at 974 South Franklin Road. If not, uh, we pray that you'll find a church home for you. Uh, so enjoy this teaching. Avenue came running, there was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt from her cats. Now I feel like there's a backstory there somewhere that she'll have to share with us, but so happy Mother's Day to Jenny from the cats. And then for all you other moms out there, of course, we wish you a happy Mother's Day and hope you have a great day with family and church family and friends. And so as we head into communion to this time of reflection... And like I've done in the past, I'm just going to simply let the scripture speak to us this morning with one reminder. And it's the same reminder. This morning, I just hope when we hit this time, when we head into Sunday morning as a church family, that we really have slowed down our lives, slowed down our minds and opened up our hearts and, and have a spirit of receiving this morning. Um, receiving what God would have for us in a message, in love. Um, but just remembering what Christ did for us at this time as we read out of Jude. But dear friends, and this is titled, A Call to Persevere. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But, you're, but you, dear friends, build, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love. As you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life, be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupt flesh. And in this, I just want to remind you, keep yourself in God's love. Let's pray. Father God, we love you so much. And at this time that... We're really just hitting the pause button and considering what your son Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago, dying on that cross so that we could be, have the opportunity to be back in one relationship with you, Father. Father God, I pray this morning that as we partake of these emblems that we truly slow down and consider the love that that action took on both yours and his, the obedience and the love to make sure that we were rescued in a way no other one could. Father God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians 13, it's a pretty famous chapter, one that most people know even if, if they've just been to a wedding. 
whether they've ever been in a church or not. Um, so 1 Corinthians 13, we know it is the love chapter. Um, but before I get to that, uh, this week we were talking about hope. And, and I, we have the sermon online um, that is, is a full length about who we should put our hope in. Um, and so I encourage you to go and, and watch that. Um, I think it's a, a good message, not maybe delivered by me, but a good message to hear the words of, of what true hope should be in. Um, and so this morning I just want to touch on something that I didn't really get into in depth in the video, um, which is funny because that's the longer sermon, so you'd think I'd get more in depth into it. But we were watching a movie last night um, called Faith, Hope, and Love. I don't know if you've seen it. It's on Netflix. Um, it's, it's a pretty good movie. Um, had me in tears a couple times. So um, is that wind too distracting? Hey. No, it's just Rick said if the wind gets too bad, i got to use that one. So anyway, we're watching this movie last night. And it's called Faith, Hope, and Love. And there was a, a scene where um, the, the premise of the movie is uh, he lost his wife in a car accident. And now his daughter's trying to hook him up with her uh, dance teacher like three years later. And he could never bring himself to read the letter from his wife that she had written in their wills. Um, and so finally he sat down and read it. And this is something she said in her letter, um, and I wanted to share it. Um, so this is the letter from, from the wife that had passed away three years earlier in the movie. It says, there's a reason we keep the casket open at funerals. We don't fear death. The king has already paid the price. The victory has already been granted to us. I want to read that again and, and think of it not as a movie quote, but as almost in this time where we're, fear is so prevalent in our nation with, with everything that's going on. But as Christians, there's a reason that we keep the casket open because we don't fear death. We don't want to die. We don't want anybody to die, but we don't fear death because the king has already paid the price. The victory has already been granted to us. And so when I was thinking about that quote with, with the title, Faith, Hope, and Love, and then the, the greatest of these is love, and that's what we'll see in the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, um, it really just resonated with me for, for this whole hope message. And so if you'll turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to read the entire chapter. It says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clang, clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and cannot fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not loved, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put my ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now, if you turn over to 1 John chapter 4, 
We all know that famous verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But 1 John 4, so we just had a chapter on love, on what love is, and what we aspire to in love. 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7, listen to this. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And we'll stop right there. And so when I think of, of this idea of love, and I think of how we're supposed to love, but how God loved us first, and I think of the idea of hope, you know, faith, hope, and love, these three that remain, and, and in my sermon, I talk, I talk about, and I, I hope you have a chance to look, but I talk about how having faith in God, not in the outcomes of life. But when I, when I think about having faith in God, what are we really having faith in? Right? What does having faith in God mean? Does it simply mean that we believe that God exists? That's part of it. Does it simply mean that we believe there's this all-powerful God that created the universe? I think that's part of it. Do we simply believe that there's this triune God, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Absolutely. But that's just part of it. Do we simply believe that God came as a man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross? Yeah, absolutely. That's part of it. But when you think about what it means to put our hope in God, what are we really putting our hope in? To me, when I was thinking about it, when I was watching that movie last night, it was just so clear. What we're putting our hope in is that God loves us. Not that we love God. Not that we've done anything great, that our faith is rooted in anything that we've done. It is in that God loves us. You see, because only someone who loved us so much would, would send his son to die on a cross. Like, there's no other explanation for it. There's no other reason why you would send your son to die for humanity. While we were still sinners, the Bible says, Christ died for us. The only reason that's even fathomable is because of the immense love that God has for us. And so this morning, today, for, for the rest of our lives, what I hope that we put our, what I what I hope we put our hope in is the love of God. Because as you, in a scripture that I read in, in my sermon, there is neither height nor depth. There is nothing on the face of this earth that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. You see, church, that is what we hope in. We don't hope in some majestic creator, God, who is absent from the earth. That we, we hope that we get to serve the rest of our lives. We hope in how much he loves us. That's really, when we think about faith in Jesus Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection that is the gospel message. It's really hope that he really does love us that much. I hope in his love. And I believe that if we truly hope in his love, that we in turn can really live out 1 Corinthians 13. 
that because He loves us, we, which is in 1 John, but because He loves us, we can then love, and I love like 1 John 3, I mean, 1 Corinthians 3.16. 1 Corinthians 13. I'm getting all of them mixed up. You see, because He loved us so much, we can now love others. We've been shown the way of love, church. We've been shown what to hope in. And where we have hope, we have life. And so if we truly hope in the love of Christ, in the love of God, in what he's done for us, let us live our life based on that hope. Let's not hope in an outcome for any situation, this one included. Let's put our hope in the love of God. Let's put our hope in the salvation offered through Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, this time, this opportunity. Father, we can't say thank you enough. We could say it every day with every breath and it wouldn't be enough. Because what we deserve is death. But what we hope in is life. Because you loved us so much to send your son, Father. And so I pray that we put our hope in him. I pray that we put our hope in you. I pray that we can look at this world and the situations, no matter if they're good situations or bad situations, that we don't find our hope in the good and we don't find our hope in the bad of this world, that we find our hope in you. In you alone. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen. The band's going to come on up for the final song of invitation. And the invitation is for those who don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. For those who have never put their hope in the amazing love that is Christ, that is God. And so if that's you this morning, if you maybe realize for the first time that you are loved beyond comprehension, there's a scene in that movie where the dance teacher who, who didn't really know God that well said it was really hard for her to put her faith in God. And the reason why is because men had let her down her whole life. And she said, and it's just really hard to put my, my faith and give over to another man. And I, that resonated with me because I think there's people out here, there's people maybe here today, people in the world who look at God and it's just hard for them, maybe not because he's a man, but because of this reason or that reason. Hard to give their life to him for whatever reason it is because of life experience in this world. This world has let them down and therefore God will let them down. But what... What God has proved to us is that he loves us. What God has proved to us through Jesus Christ is that there's nothing he can do to let us down. Because the victory, as she said in her letter to him, the victory has already been won. He's already conquered. There's nothing else to conquer. He doesn't need to conquer this pandemic because he's already conquered the world. He's already conquered death. Oh, death, where is your sting? It's not there. And so this morning, if, if you for the first time are looking at God going, I want to give my life to you. I want to turn it over to you. I trust in your love and I put my faith and hope in you. Then get out of your car. We can get out of our cars now. Get out of your car and come on out here. If you don't want to get out, you can still wave your hand and we'll come to you. But put your faith and hope in a God that loves you. Won't you come to Christ as we sing this song of invitation?
So as we say every week, the invitation is one that God gives out, not one that we give out. And for us Christians, those who have put our faith in Christ already, let's show the world what we have to hope in. Let's close with prayer and then we'll figure out how we're going to dismiss this thing. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, this time, this opportunity. Father, as we leave now from, from this service, my prayer is that we that we can show the hope that we have. That if we truly have faith and hope and love, that we can show that to the world. Especially in a time like this when so many people are finding hope and fear and, and bad situations. That they're, they're what they're calling losing hope, but they're really just putting their hope in the defeat. And so I pray that we can show them that there's something else to hope in. That if we hope in the author of the outcomes, we don't have to worry about the outcome anymore. Help us to show that hope that we have to the world. In Christ, let me pray. Amen. All right. All right. So new normal looks like this. We're going to need to clear out all of the chairs and get them into the cars before we can exit the parking lot. I'm going to have you guys exit on your own. I trust you guys to do that. Just give us a little bit of time because we've got like Dean and Robin, so we might need to give them a little extra time to move here a little bit. So once we get all this cleared, we can then exit. We love you guys a whole bunch.